Hey booktube, it's Peg at the History Shelf. And now, for the moment, many of you have been waiting for, many of you I know by name, we have our Naval History Hall, the 14 volumes of Samuel Eliot Morrison, which I have teased and talked about um, for a very long time. So what I'm going to do, uh, there's 14 volumes, I'm going to show each one. Uh, I don't want it to be an overly long video, but I, you know, rather than just hold them up and move on, I'll give a, I'll read a quick uh, description of the events covered in each book, give you a good uh, look over of each. They're beautiful. They're paperback. Um, they are printed by the Naval Institute Press, which uh, they did, and I have to say they've done a, a fabulous job. I have two stacks, one on either side of me, uh, seven on each side, and I can rest my arms on them like so, like that. They are so tall. Anyway, I have new bookshelves. I have one over here already that Martine has so wonderfully bought for me. Look at that little red bow on it. And put together. Now, those books um, were just kind of thrown in there, and I have to reorganize. So it's not going to look like that um, because things need to be, uh, you know, sorted the way I like. But look how pretty, huh? Thank you, Martine. She's waving at me. <laughs> Okay. Whew. Anyway, happy Friday to you guys. Before I uh, dive in, just want to say thank you for uh, all of your support. Thank you. I, I think I'm inching closer to 500 subscribers, which is, wow, I never, never conceived of reaching that number. And it's just amazing. And I'm, I'm just excited to know that maybe you guys are digging the history stuff. Um, you know, along with my fiction, I like to throw in. But uh, okay, so anyway... Samuel Eliot Morrison, the ultimate uh, historian of World War II naval history. Um, this is it. The big series. And here's the book, first book in the series, Volume 1, The Battle of the Atlantic, September 1939 to May 1943. As you can see, every one of these volumes will have this banner at the top. I'm sorry for the glare. Here we go. History of the United States, um, naval operations, and World War II. I'm trying to see the quality of my video. I want to make sure it's looking okay. I think it's okay. All right, great. Um, nice spine, as you can see. Very Naval Institute, Press, Battle of the Atlantic. Um, and uh, they're just shiny. Brand spanking new. Uh, the quality of the typeface is, is perfect. It's not. It's just. I was wondering how the typeface would look. Um, full of wonderfully reproduced maps. We have photos, of course. Um, I can't. I just can't wait to to dig in. So this is going to be fabulous. So we'll read the first. Um, let me get my glasses here. So the first book in the series, uh, Battle of the Atlantic, the volume one in the series, explores all U.S. naval operations in the Atlantic during the early years of the war, including the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, the Barents Sea, and the defense of American shores and ships against the threat of German U-boats. So volume one. i got to figure out where to put them now. Okay. <laughs> it's going to drop down the floor. Uh, okay, volume two, Operations in North African Waters. Try to get away from those lamps. October 1942 to June 1943. Again, just wonderful. Um, I'm just really, this, they're wonderfully illustrated. Got some wonderful maps. Um, the type is, is perfect. It's like a perfect size, so it's not too tiny, which I was worried about, or dense. Uh, really good letting, um, li line spacing um, in between sentences, and uh, it's going to be a, a joy to go through these volumes. So volume two covers naval aspects of Operation Torch, the British-American invasion of French North Africa. The campaign was designed to open a second front uh, to relieve the Russians in their fight against the Germans and to pave the way 
uh, for an invasion of southern Europe by gaining control of North Africa and the Mediterranean Sea. This volume provides a complete and detailed narrative of the first large-scale Allied invasion of the war, which at the time was the largest overseas naval expedition ever mounted. And that's volume two. And in each volume is uh, slightly different in size, so they're not, you know, all completely uniform in length. Sorry, every time I move off screen, it refocuses. All right. Um, volume three. Uh, the Rising Sun in the Pacific. Well, okay, so they call this Volume 3, but this says 1931 to April 1942. So, uh, you know, I guess it's not completely chronological. Um, I will read the back. I'm sure it just gives you an overview of J Japan, obviously, and, and their um, <clears throat> uh, rise. Yeah, obviously, because look at, we got the the Rising Sun flag right there. So this is going to be a great book. I've always been interested in Japanese Naval history, uh, Admiral, um, I think it was Yamamoto, um, fascinating guy and um, orchestrator of Pearl Harbor, uh, one of the main guys behind that. So this one, Volume 3, um, examines the incidents that began the Pacific War, starting with an examination of Japan's motives and internal conflicts over pursuing war with the United States. It presents a compelling account of the early years of the war in the Pacific from the attack on Pearl Harbor uh, to the Japanese invasions of the Philippines and Wake Island to the defense of the Malay barrier uh, to the Battle of the Java Sea and finally to the Doolittle Raid on Tokyo. This will be a very fun volume. Okay, so that's volume three. And then volume four we have Coral Sea, Midway, and Submarine Actions, May 1942 to August 1942. I, and I have to say, I love I love the artwork and all of these books. I, you know, I just, I, of course, you've heard me say this before. I'll say it again. I'm a military uh, history um, nut fan, and uh, I love seeing the artwork that goes along with, like, it, all the, my history articles. I get my military history magazines. I love um, original artwork. And, oh, God, these are great. I'm going to have to find out who illustrated all of these. Probably just very different uh, different pieces of artwork from around. But, um, okay, so volume four is a detailed look at two of the pivotal naval engagements of the Pacific uh, War that marked the turning point from defeat to victory. In addition to covering these great carrier actions, where for the first time aircraft played a defining role in determining the outcome of a sea battle, this volume also fully examines the little-known exploits of the fledgling American Submarine Corps in the Pacific in its courageous attacks on Japanese shipping during the first year of the war. There you go. Coral Sea, Midway, and Submarine Actions, Volume 4. I'm going to try not to move because I don't like having the, the uh, uh, focus go in and out. Okay, so Volume 5, The Struggle for Guadalcanal. August 1942 to February 1943. Um, that's volume five. It's like a massive explosion going on here. Um, I had recently had a book haul from bookoutlet.com, and one of the books I got was, I think, Midnight in the Pacific, and it was all about Guadalcanal. And I had mentioned I wanted to get a good one volume history of it, and now I have another one. And I think I'm going to sneeze, but I will try not to. So Volume 5 covers the six major engagements in the waters surrounding Guadalcanal, in which the U.S. Navy experienced more fighting than in any three previous wars. Uh, from the Solomon Islands campaign to the courageous actions of Edson's raiders at the Battle of the Bloody Ridge and the Battle of Tassafaranga, the author describes events from the ship, dock, uh, from the ship decks, cockpits, <laughs> cockpits, and rich tops where the fate of thousands was decided. It's volume five. Again, this is just a really impressive set, you guys. I'm. It was worth the hundred, one hundred, hundred and twenty dollars. Yeah, buck twenty. I dropped a buck twenty on that. Um, but it, this is this is going to be a, a project for the decade, I think. Um, I'd like to read all of these before uh, the decade is out. I know many of you would just. Um, power through these. Who knows? I could probably read these in a few years, you know, but uh, I'm going to start this year, so we'll see how fast I can get through all these. So volume six, 
Ooh, this looks really good. Breaking the Bismarck's Barrier. July 22nd, 1942 to May 1st, 1944. Um, got a little night, night vision here. Nighttime look at sea here. All right. So, Volume 6 examines the drive up from Guadalcanal in New Guinea to the taking of Rabaul and the colossal American victory at the Battle of the Bismarck Sea during the Papuan campaign. Um, this volume also covers the Central Solomons, the Juan Gulf Offensive, the invasion of New Georgia, and the battles of Kula Gulf in Columbagnara. I think I got that. That's volume six. Okay, so now we're at the halfway mark, guys. So, uh, and another great artwork on the front here. His, uh, yeah, volume seven is Aleutians, Gilberts, and Marshalls, June 1942 to April 1944. This is a little bit of a skinnier volume. Again, I think we're just, uh, just some other, some more great photos. I just love how it's just amply illustrated replete with excellent photos. Um, look at this. It's just some great stuff. Just have to show you guys. I have to give you some visuals here, you know. Wow. Okay. Volume 7 <clears throat> begins with operations in the Aleutians after the Battle of Midway and carries through to the capture of Batu and Kiska, including the Battle of the Komondorsky Islands, Morrison, uh, whoops, sorry, <laughs> Morrison, who took part in Operation Galvanic, um, describes in detail the planning, preparation, and execution of the great amphibious operations on the Gilbert Islands and the conquest of the Marshalls, offering frank discussions <laughs> of mistakes made in these campaigns. He also provides some amusing anecdotes including how the Japanese eluded U.S. detection in the evacuation of Kiska. So I, I had no idea that he was involved um, in that operation. So this one will be really revealing, I think, really kind of a, almost like a first-person account in many ways. All right, that's volume seven, guys. All right, now we're moving to the second stack. And we have New Guinea and the Marianas. March 1944 to August 1944. Just beautiful set. All right. Volume 8 covers five of the most eventful months of the Pacific War, from the end of the Marshall Islands campaign to the recovery of Guam. Morrison details the actions of the entire Pacific fleet. Particular emphasis is given to the greatest carrier action of all time, the Battle of the Philippine Sea a naval feat equal to Midway in tactical interest that was decisive in the outcome of the war. He also covers the bitterly contested Marianas operation, giving credit to the flexibility and fortitude of U.S. forces. It's volume 8. Okay, volume 9. Sicily, Salerno, Anzio, January 1943 to June 1944. Again, outstanding... Outstanding artwork. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Such a geek. Okay, Volume 9 recounts American naval activities in the Mediterranean with three major amphibious operation, operations. The invasion of Sicily, the capture of the Salerno beachhead, and the long Anzio beachhead struggle. In describing these joint operations, Morrison discusses individual exploits and strategies. Never reluctant to tackle controversial subjects, he calls the Sicilian operation ill-conceived, the evacuation of three German divisions from Sicily preventable, the Italian armistice woefully bungled, and the hard-fought Anzio operation a mistake. So I love that. I love, I love uh, writers and historians that can, will take a position and, and stick with it. I love it. All right, cool. Volume 9. We're getting there, guys. Okay, volume 10, the Atlantic Battle 1. Look at that. Look at that cover. That is bad. Badass. Okay, sorry. 
Oh, I love it. This is going to look so good once I get it on the, sh the new shelves over there. I think I'm going to have them on the, the, the bottom, the two bottom shelves. Um, or maybe I can fit them. I don't think I can fit them all on one shelf, but we'll see. All right. So uh, volume 10 focuses on the war against Nazi U-boats between 1943 and 1945. It was a conflict fought up and down the Atlantic coast from Nova Scotia to Brazil. In 1942, Allied shipping was in a desperate situation as the Germans were building U-boats faster than the British and Americans could sink them. By summer of 1943, however, the tide had turned and Germany had lost the strategic initiative in the Atlantic because of the anti-submarine offensive launched by the Western Allies. Hence, the, bat the Atlantic Battle won. Good stuff. Let's see what kind of cool pictures we have in here. Ooh, you gotta love these pictures of these these old guys here. They're they're great. You know, old sea dogs. Um, cool stuff. <laughs> Peggy, get it right. <laughs> cool. All right, volume ten. And volume eleven. I think we should be able to finish this in 20 minutes, so let's keep it rolling. Um, the Invasion of France and Germany, 1944 to 1945. I think we know what this means. Mm-hmm. Yep. Especially with that cover. All right. Volume 11 in the series recounts the U.S. Navy's role in the invasion of Normandy, the largest and most complicated military operation ever undertaken. Involving more than a million American soldiers, 124,000 sailors, and 427,000 aviators, Operation Neptune Overlord encompassed five major landings on the coast of Normandy. As Morrison shows, the fire curtain provided by the powerful guns of the Navy proved to be one of the most valuable trump cards of the Allied invasion armies. So that's going to be cool. Check this out. Let's see here. I'm trying to find some good pictures for you. Kind of looks at the rehearsal for it and <clears throat> some older older maps there, like the British sector. Just a very clean looking um, volume. Pages are beautiful. Nice and fresh. Rear, Rear, Rear Admiral Alan Kirk. This is a, this is just a beautiful set. I can't even <laughs> can't even get over it. All right, I'm trying not to make noise when I set things down next to this microphone. Okay, guys, volume twelve is Leyte. June 1944 to January 1945. Look at that aircraft carrier. That's just beautiful. I gotta find out where they got all this artwork from. This one's pretty pretty thick, so let's see what uh, volume 12 is about. Um, yeah, re volume 12 returns to the Pacific for a dramatic retelling of one of the greatest naval battles of all time. The determining factors in the battle for Lady Gulf were superb skill, heroism, and aggressiveness, but confusion, surprise, and faulty assumptions also played significant roles. The Allied victory at Lady enabled the U.S. Navy to transport troops and base long-range base long -range bomber planes in position so close to Japan that victory was all but assured. Uh, Morrison's classic account details all of the key engagements surrounding the taking of Lady. Beautiful. Look at, look at this action. Look at these pictures of these... Uh, Aircraft taking flak, or shot. Nope, that's not flak. Sorry, those are that's the waves. That's over the beachhead. Ooh, this is great photography. Man, some really good wartime shots in here. All right, volume twelve, and then we have our final two volumes. And I will find a beautiful home on my brand new bookshelf for this set. And I will show you once I got the bookshelf the way I want it. I will take a little video of just all the books. 
since I seem to be incapable of getting a bookshelf tour done with me in it, maybe I should just take a video of the books themselves. <laughs> I don't know. Let me know what you prefer. Um, volume 13 is The Liberation of the Philippines. Luzon, Mindanao, the Visayas, 1944 to 1945. Okay, so volume 13 details a series of amphibious operations and carrier actions that led to the final liberation of the Philippines following the crushing defeat of the Japanese at Lady Gulf. The volume explores the countermeasures taken against the Japanese kamikazes, along with Admiral Halsey's famous Task Force 38 in the South China Sea and the deadly typhoon of December 18, 1944. Additional chapters recount the assaults on Borneo, submarine operations in the Southwest Pacific in 1945, and Captain Milton Miles' last naval battle of the war with sailing junks. Very cool. And that's volume 13. All right, final volume. Final volume. Oh, beautiful. Victory in the Pacific, 1945. <laughs> there you go. So, final volume examines two of the most famous campaigns in which Admiral Morrison participated, Iwo Jima and Okinawa. He spares no details when describing the grim consequences of the kamikaze attacks on U.S. ships. With his usual clarity and skill, uh, Morrison also discusses the strategy that led to the last major campaigns of the Pacific War and to the dropping of the atomic bombs. He addresses the, lo the logistical problem of supplying fleets and armies thousands of miles from bases, the devastating prowls by submarines, and the controversial loss of the USS Indianapolis. That should be very interesting. Of particular interest is his detailed account of the de delicate negotiations that led to the surrender of Japan. Wow. Okay, this is this is fantastic. Again, I'm a, a new, um, I only became newly aware of Samuel Elliott Morrison thanks to recommendations from Steve Donahue's channel and Mark Richardson at Richardson Reads channel. Um, they both uh, sing his praises. And so I was like, well, I got to check this out. I've never heard of him, if you can believe that. I um, uh, just never did. And I had bought a, a one volume book that Steve had recommended, a, The Two Ocean War. Um, uh, but when I saw this set, and I was like, this is something, to, this is a keeper. This is something, you know, you'd want to just treasure always. And I love sets and um, I love history and I love naval history. So this, my friends, is my naval history hall. And I, I want to thank Steve and Mark for introducing me to this man. And uh, I, I am looking forward to um, starting with the first volume. We're going to start reading that this, this year. And I'll make it a project um, to work through these volumes for the next several years. Uh, so anyway, guys, if you have any uh, comments, feedback, if you've read any of these um, in different, you know, editions, or I'd be happy to, to, to hear from you. Oh, I should mention that I, I recently got another book on uh, from the Naval Institute Press. It's a new release. Maybe I can review this in conjunction with reading the Lady Gulf version by Samuel Elliott Morrison. But uh, this is another release by um, Naval Institute Press, The Battle of Lady Gulf at 75, a retrospective by Thomas J. Cutler. And uh, let's see. I think this was someone who, uh, yeah, someone who was actually involved with the... Um, yeah, it's just like a retrospective from someone who, I, I don't want to read all of this for you guys, my, my voice is going, but anyway, <laughs> I can show you this another time, um, but I do have another book on Leyte, and uh, again, this artwork is just all over the place, so, uh, yeah, let me put that back there, okay guys, I'm happy I finally got to it. More videos to come, I'm going to be, I'll do a couple more this weekend, um, and I might do another one right now, but in the meantime, I came through. There's your Naval History Hall. I hope you're having all a wonderful evening, and I will talk to you very soon. Take care. Bye.